Welcome to the String Theory of the Unexplained. I'm your host, John Ventry. Our co-host is Fred Saluga. And our guests today are Steve Cox and Aurora Swan Hildy. And we're going to discuss Henny Dreadful. All right, guys, let's talk about this uh, TV series that was on, what was it? Was it Showtime? It was originally on Showtime. Showtime, and now you said it's, it's on? It's on Netflix. Netflix, okay. So, Fred, this was on from uh, 2014 to 2016. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but it was three seasons, but I guess it overlapped in years right. and that type of thing. So, 2014 to 2016, there was supposed to be a season four. They announced they got funding for season four, and then it was about three or four episodes later. It abruptly ended, and I'm sitting there saying, the end? How could it be over when they said they got season four? Now, you said you knew something about this? this? Yes, originally when they went into it, even the actors didn't know. They thought it was going to have a continuation. Yeah. Um, but I think with the director, uh, he knew all along it was only going to be three seasons. He knew where he wanted to end it. He knew how he wanted it to end. And there was also, once again, even though they might have gotten the money for it, there wasn't enough to maintain because it was uh, very expensive at the time. Um, to even create the settings and the different areas of each storyline. Okay. But the whole thing was with Vanessa Ives. The whole story surrounded her. And with her death at the very end, um, it was basically done. Yeah. They, they felt that they couldn't go any further, that with her it ended everything. Yeah, yeah. But I, I got the impression, though, in watching it, that they had just introduced... Dr. Jekyll, yes. uh, maybe, you know, halfway through season three, uh, Dracula yeah. uh, and Satan. And it's like you introduce these new characters and they're in four episodes, five episodes. It's mm -hmm. over, it's done, it's gone. You barely even develop them. It's almost, you know, I, somebody had said to me the viewership wasn't there. But technically you don't have ratings on Showtime, but they do know how many people are yes, watching. Yes, yes. And they kind of, there must not have been enough. Now, this is a show that won Emmys, right? Yes. Didn't um, Eva Green, didn't I, she yeah, get, she, yeah, she, she did, won some yeah. awards. Her acting was tremendous in this. This is one of the best TV series I've ever watched. This one, I was, it was, it reminded yes. me, like, you know, Project Blue Book was on right. the last two. I liked it, even though the shows were embellished and weren't the real UFO stories. I liked watching it, you know, and I liked watching this and, and a few other, like uh, Yellowstone right now, that's a TV series. I look forward to watching it. This was one of the best ones. Now, interestingly, Fred, if you remember, the peak of the activity here in this house right. was the same time frame as this show. For me, it was right, June right. 6th of 14 right. until April, I think it was 21st of 16. Right. And we've done episodes on it, and there were reasons for the dates right. that it occurred. And uh, so somebody watching would say, psychologically, you were into this show, and this brought your experiences on. Or, uh, you know, I know it wasn't because the dog, there were witnesses, my dog reacted to it, all of that. Or, like you said, the Tulpers, if you think about enough. something uh, yeah. en enough, you can make it happen, right? Right. But like, too, John, I mean, you got quite a bit of I know, I know. stuff in here that would... Uh, yeah, well, they, to me, this is just decor. Yeah. You know, yeah. like the uh, Horus statue upstairs mm -hmm. and the Egyptian stuff. You know, to me, it's just decorations. I don't ever think about it. I don't worship it. To me, it's this is the uh, decor of this room. Mm -hmm. And every room is is uh, themed, you know. So, but I've always liked my horror sci-fi stuff. You right, know, right. I was not a UFO person until right. I was forty-one. I knew nothing about the UFO field. I went to comic cons and horror cons and collected famous monsters of Filmland. So, you know, I, I just kind of find that uh, a little interesting. You know, that it occurred at the same time I was watching the show was the peak of the activity. And you know, it's interesting too. So, I'm watching the show at the end of that activity in 2016. There was a show on uh, Damien mm -hmm. yeah, with the I Omen. Yes, yeah. yes. I was laying in bed yeah. one night watching it, and there was a scene with him when they kind of, I guess they explained that he's actually the Antichrist and stuff. Mm -hmm. It was pounding on my walls, mm -hmm. spirits pounding. I grabbed the control and I turned it off and it stopped. Mm -hmm. Right? So 
I know it's not psychological. And the dog reacted. These things were real. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, I just want to throw that in because Being, you don't really know right. the answer to any of this. Oh, I Lord wanted to ask Lord. you. Give your background of what you do, what you're into. That was one of the things I wanted you to do. Um, well, to answer that part of, of having things come through, being a psychic medium and a sensitive, I have to watch what I watch. And when I watch certain things, like certain the ghost things that they have on TV, because things will come through. I pick yeah. things up, things will happen. Um, I don't read Anne Rice for that fact, because I've had phenomenon happen in the midst of reading her books, putting it down, it goes quiet. Pick yeah. it back up, same thing. So things will come through when you're concentrating on, say, a movie, um, a TV series, a book, or what have you. But no, I'm a, I'm a psychic medium and I'm a sensitive. Um, I've been able to communicate with spirits since I was two years old. Okay. Um, I've been a practicing witch for 39 years. I'm, a, a, I'm basically eclectic. So I do um, a lot of different, I don't just stay with one particular, you know, format of my beliefs and my religion. I was raised by my mother. She was a Christian, but she also raised me with Native American spirituality mm -hmm. and their religion because of our Native American ancestry. Um, but I'm also, like, I consider myself a Chriso pagan at the same time because I do have a tendency to call upon certain saints, and I do have a tendency to go more towards, like, a Catholic aspect, but at the same time, I'm very paganistic, and I believe in the goddess, the god, and what have you. Yeah, we wanted, Fred, we wanted somebody who understood this genre and uh, watched the show. Right. So we had to ask around. Some people, oh, I watched, I watched a little, I didn't like it, it was a little bit too risque, this, that. You know, but then we come across you. I think mm -hmm. Brian Seach had said, mm -hmm. or you said, mm -hmm. that's the person we got to get right. in the show. You know, so uh, so that's that's what we did. So uh, if you want, why don't you hold that book up for the camera? I, I had bought that book because I really loved the show. And uh, that gave you all the information you need to know about season one. So uh, in the production notes, you know, it was like, I was a penny dreadful as a woman. I, I thought so too. I yeah. you were talking. Yeah, what, and I saw you see the show and I see Eva Green. Oh, Penny Dreadful. That's her name, Penny. Then the show comes on and that ain't a name. It's Vanessa Ives. <laughs> I was like, what's going on here? So uh, in the book, yeah. and I looked it up. Yeah. In the production notes, it says Penny Dreadfuls were lurid stories of crime, the occult, and the supernatural sold in weekly parts in Victoria, London. So there's a cover of the book that the book refers to uh, season one, and, and it was really cool. I really enjoyed this, you know. So just giving a little bit of the background on this, though, it was written and created by John Logan. And John Logan had never done a TV series before. His quote is, I've always loved monsters for their loneliness and their search to be accepted. And he said, growing up gay, I embraced the monster. So you have to, you know, you could see in his writings and in the storyline how all the creatures are kind of on the outside, right? Mm -hmm. The the, the, mon the Frankenstein monster. Yes. And you could really see that in that you're not accepted. You're, yes. not, you're on the outside looking in. And I think, you know, his persuasion, the way he grew up, I think he could sympathize. And that's why he was able to write such a great story. Mm -hmm. I, I think this was one of the best written stories I, I've ever seen. So in season one, you have vampires. Season two, you have witches. Season three, you have Dracula, which is the flesh, and Satan, which mm -hmm. is your soul. And the interesting thing I found out here, and never gave it a thought, and I, I brought this up in other shows we did, was in one episode, Satan and Dracula meet, and he says, Hi, cousin. Yes, yes. I they... said, and it dawned on me, yeah. all creatures are fallen angels. Mm -hmm. Vampires are fallen angels. Right. They're demonic. They're cousins of the fallen angels or demons, or they are demons, they're shapeshifters, whatever. Never occurred to me. I thought Dracula was the 1930 story written by Bram Stoker, and it was no different than Frankenstein, King Kong. I had no idea that a vampire is really a fallen angel. More or less. Uh, yeah. Lilith, who was supposedly in, in Jewish folklore, in, in their, in their um, religious books and what have you, um, Lilith is mentioned. 
as being Adam's first wife. Yeah. And because of her, she's the mother of all vampires. Yeah. So yeah, but I think when Adam, I don't know what happened. He rejected her. Well, she would, she wasn't. Wanted, she she wouldn't be. What? She wouldn't listen to him. Yeah, she wouldn't be subservient yeah. and yeah. obedient to him. And she was a woman's liberal. And she left and said, "I will get yeah. you." I don't remember the whole storyline. Yes. And she became a vampire in the land of Nod and all of that. Yes. You know, was Cain her Cain huh? Cain well, and Abel? Yeah. Well, not in the Bible. No. No. But it's no. like grief. Mythology. There's a lot of mythology about her, but it's in Jewish. It's yeah. in Jewish myth. It's yeah. also in their in their religious text. Um, they talk about her being, you know, Adam's first wife. Yeah. Yeah. Um, she she refused to be subservient. She refused to be on the bottom. She said, "We are equal. I can be on top too." So yeah. In the sexual, you yeah. know, aspect, and um, she left. And when God sent His angels to bring her back, she refused, and she was cast out. And, and, and you got she, a new wife. Yes. Yeah. So now, Fred, just like we talked mm -hmm. about the last UFO episode in those mm -hmm. books, how much of that is true? It's not in the Bible, right. right? How much is written or placed in by the devil right. to undermine Genesis, creation, the Old Testament? Because a lot of that stuff you see goes against the Gospels. And what's the purpose? <laughs> if you knock out the foundation right. of Christianity... His return is not real. It can't happen. You know, so it's interesting when you look at what's the motive. One of the things I'm doing right now, I'm going to the dark side of UFO for class. Yeah. And I got into vampires. And they were saying that Dracula actually could have been an alien due to the fact that he was drinking blood like he was. Yeah. Because they need blood to, in order to flourish. Mm. So it's very interesting. 28 days later, don't go to Alaska, you know, I don't remember what month it is, but <laughs> you don't want to go there. And that was a cool concept. That's one of yeah. those, it's almost like Jurassic Park with the mosquito in, in the, right. Uh, right? Yes. You know, 28 yeah. days yes. later, yes. Oh, who, why didn't somebody think of that earlier? Yeah. It's always night, perfect for, right. for vampires, right. yes. you know, those yes. are one of those Great idea. So this guy Watch John, out for owls. Owls, yeah. yeah. Owls will tell you. My brother used to see owls all the time yeah. in his dreams and stuff. But Logan, get this, this guy Logan, never even heard of him. And you know, you don't get credit. He wrote Gladiator, Star Trek Nemesis, mm -hmm. The Last Samurai, Alien Covenant, and Skyfall, James Bond. Mm -hmm. He wrote those. And he wrote Penny Dreadful. That's how skilled this guy is. I never heard of him until this series. I think it was the best written and acted series I had ever seen. The, the casting, the casting itself with the actors that were chosen for the parts they played was absolutely phenomenal. Um, they each had their own strengths and mm -hmm. weaknesses, of course, but they were just a phenomenal group of individuals oh, yeah. that played their parts so well in the storylines that they had. Um, to me, um, the Ava Green and uh, Josh Hartnett, and yes. the guy from James Bond who played Malcolm. Yes, I mean, these are big actors. Um, these aren't like Timothy nobody. Dalton, yes. Yeah, Timothy Dalton. And I'm trying to think of the other gentleman. I have him here. Um, Rory Kinnear, who played Frankenstein's monster, John Clare. And I saw him with James Bond afterwards yeah. in, in what, the last James Bond movie. He played one of the uh, MI6 guys or okay. whatever. Yeah. Um, he was just absolutely phenomenal absolutely. in his portrayal because in the very beginning, if you watch, you don't like his character. You can't stand what a monster he is. Yeah. But as the series progresses, you not only become empathetic, you become sympathetic. He grows. He learns. And as I have it like written, because I want to make sure, but in the very last um, scene where you know Vanessa is talking to him and they have their last conversation, she says, "I think you are the most human man I have ever known." Yeah. And yeah. It, it, that's the epitome of what he became, because yeah. he truly was he found his humanity, and that's what he'd been looking for all along. And there were a couple of interesting things. One was where, she didn't know she had met him in the sanitarium yes. and he was Satan. Yes. Had taken over him. Yes. And when, so, so when she met him as the monster, she didn't realize it was her orderly from the sanitarium that yes. Satan possessed, right? Yes. And the other thing is, do you remember how they introduced the monster? The Frank, yes. Dr. Frankenstein yes. oh, creates yes. a monster, right? Mm -hmm. And he's trying to teach him and everything. And, and, and Proteus. He, he, Proteus, right? Yes, yes. So, 
There's one scene, I thought this was the Frankenstein monster, this was great. All of a sudden Proteus is standing there and from behind him yeah. it's like the alien, a hand comes through him, yeah. rips him in half yes, and throws him down and it's the Frankenstein monster that comes out, the first one. Yes. Proteus was the second one. Mm -hmm. So this is the Frankenstein monster, yes. that, but he was a character, you know, yes. w w good guy, actually, yeah, you know? Yeah, he was. I mean, and everything that he went through, yeah. and him sacrificing, finding what true love was really about in the friendship with Vanessa, yeah. but also in letting go his son. Like yeah, Him yeah. letting go, knowing he could have had him reanimated, but yeah. him letting him go and them showing that scene hmm. was just, I mean... Oh, it was great. Yeah, you couldn't help but cry because yeah. it was just, it was beautiful that he... The sacrifice, the love that he understood. Yeah. Well, this aired, first aired May 11, 2014. I think the reason it ran into 16th, wasn't there a little period there where they didn't make it? And I it kind of so, then yeah. came out in September, October, and ran into 16th? Yes. There was a period where maybe they didn't have the funding or didn't right. want to know, didn't know if they can do season three. But it's set in 1891 London, right? Mm -hmm. But it was filmed in Dublin. Mm -hmm. So in 2016, 16, I think it was, I go to Scotland, and I'm, I'm, I'm there in Edinburgh, and I go into a museum. It looks just like the one with Doc, with the Dracula, mm -hmm. remember where he was in there? Yes. The museum with yes, all of yes. the... I said, this yes. is it. I went yes. right over and asked the girl, did they film Penny Dreadful here? And she goes, no, I don't know what you're talking about. And she goes, it wasn't filmed here. But that was that... Victorian yes, he was a, Yeah, he was a zoologist. He was an actual doctor, Dr. Yes. Sweet. So then in the following year, I go to Dublin. I still don't know that Penny Dreadful is filmed there. I could have went to the place. I mm -hmm. thought it was Scotland or it was London. It turns out it was Dublin. I went to Dublin and I didn't know it. And I could have went to the, to, to the museum that it was filmed in, you know? So, so another quote is, we are all monsters with secrets and demons searching to be happy. This really gets into yes, the character yes. of people and, and who yes. we are. So the good characters in the show was Ethan Chandler, mm -hmm. right? Yes. He was, if you remember, the Wolfman, Larry Talbert, right? Remember Larry Talbert from, mm -hmm. the, from the Wolfman? So that's Ethan Chandler, and his last name is Talbert in, in, in the show. But he's a Wild West, you know, Wild Bill mm -hmm. Cody, Buffalo Bill gunslinger, perfect shot, mm -hmm. cowboy, uh, who... At the end, they call him the werewolf of God. Yes. He was adopted by Sioux Indians, and his Sioux father was a werewolf that turned him into a werewolf. You know, I always loved that werewolf of God because yes. he was a good guy. Yeah. He was yeah. there to fight Dracula and Satan and help Vanessa Ives. Mm -hmm. You know, so he was the werewolf of God, which I thought was cool because yes. werewolves are always bad. And They're like Bigfoot and right. Dogman and all of that. But it was a cool character. Now, Vanessa Ives, if you remember the Dracula storyline, yes. she is a friend of Mina. Remember yes. Mina who gets bitten and mm -hmm. she dies and all of that in the Dracula storyline? She's her friend, but she turns into a witch and is stalked by both Satan and Dracula for their wife. Mm -hmm. I think it was Dracula's yes, wife yes. Satan wanted her. Now, interesting in the storyline, the Frankenstein monster, the creature, if you remember, he never teams up with the other characters. Yes. So at the big yeah. fight at the end, yes. he's not part of it. He right. was always separate and alone. Yes. You know, he never teamed up with either side. So the picture here of the monster, very poetic creature. He would read poetry. And what was the author? Yeats or somebody that he would quote from? Uh, I don't know. Yeah, Yeats and uh, Wordsworth. Yeah, he would quote from them. Uh, he had a conscience, but he was searching for a mate. Yeah. You know, he wanted the bride of Frankenstein. He didn't want to be alone, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, and then you have Sir Malcolm from James Bond. What was his name? Timothy, T Timothy Dalton. Timothy Dalton. Yeah. He's this wealthy explorer, basically heartless. Yes. You know, he'd shoot anything. Anything that walks, he'd shoot it. And he was out for fame. And I thought he was Van Helsing. When you look at the old Dracula, but he wasn't. Right. There was actually a Van Helsing that was in the show. Which was David Warner. Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah yes. that's right. Yes. Then there was a guy called Sambine. 
Yes. He was a slave trader from Africa. He was the house, house servant mm -hmm. and the accomplice of Malcolm. Where Al Malcolm would go on safari, he'd go. He was there to protect him. He had these knives, these cool yes. short knives and stuff. And his face was all, you know, tattooed. In, in tattooed and yeah. whatever tribal that was from Africa. Then you had Dorian Gray. And Dorian Gray was this very rich bisexual playboy with no feelings. Mm. He had lived so long, he no longer had any, any feelings. But he was neutral. He yes. was, he'd come and go, whatever. He'd go with the conservatives, he'd go with the liberals, he'd go with the monsters, he'd go yeah. with the police. He didn't care. He just came and went. Wherever he flowed, he went that direction, you know? So uh, you have Victor Frankenstein. Now in this, he's a God-hating scientist. And a number of times in it, he says something, there is no God, that type of thing. Believing in science that he could re create and, and resurrect the dead. And he know? did that because as a young boy he watched his mother die. Okay. And he wasn't able to save her. And it was very traumatic and that's why he didn't believe in God. Yeah. So, I mean, and you have like, when you're looking at Penny Dreadful, it was during the time of the um, Industrial Revolution. So you had science coming in, but then you had Vanessa, okay, so you have him, you have Victor Frankenstein, and then you have you know, Vanessa, who, who is in, a, in her own right religious and pious, and she struggles with her faith. And she goes up and down, of course, and, you know, she struggles because of what she saw as a child with the sexuality and what have you. And, you know, in that time, things happen behind closed doors. People think that the Victorian era was prim and proper. It wasn't. Mm. There was a lot that went on and happened. Um, but it was that, that balance and that fight, and where she... She does lose her faith, but then she's redeemed in the end because not only does she find true love, but she also sacrifices herself for the will of man. You know, so but it, it, that's where you find, and I think in the end, too, with, with uh, Victor Frankenstein, when his creation, Lily Frankenstein, a uh, phenomenal uh, actress, uh, she just did a, a phenomenal job, Billy Piper. She was originally on Doctor Who. She yeah, played okay. Rose. Um, but her going from Brona Croft to Lily Frankenstein, and you see also, once again, the change, you know what I mean, how, how she was. But it was her, her speech to him, and why. But she, she, the Bride of Frankenstein, was a man-hating prostitute yes. Yes. with tuberculosis who was reanimated mm -hmm. as the Bride of Frankenstein. And you see it in the character. She yes. wanted to kill all the men, yes. you know. It yes. was from her days of being taken advantage of. Yes. So you have the creatures, which you could see, you know, they can see on the screen here. You have the vampires, you have the witches, and then you have Dracula. So uh, I want to get into some of the most memorable quotes uh, right now. Anything else before we get into this? this? This is going to explain a lot of it. Anything else that you wanted to add before um, we do that? Just that, like I said, uh, just I iterate. I mean, the the characters alone the, the, were phenomenal. The characters that they played, like even like going to the very end with Wes Studi, having him come in yeah. as his, you know, his, you know, father yeah, per se, father, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, was just it was just great. It yeah. was just just a great. Great cast. Yeah, it was. I'm telling you, this was a great show, and I bought it. I have the three Blu-rays. I, I bought and, this. And, and there's and there's more. Like if you look at it beyond the the blood, the gore, and the sex, there's such a phenomenal storyline for each character, yeah. and how it all plays out was just very well done. Yeah. Let's get into some of the quotes. We'll start with uh, Vanessa Ives, right? Mm -hmm. So, and, and it's kind of small for me to read, but it, she says. Perhaps it has always been there, this thing, this demon inside me or behind my back waiting for me to turn around. And I'm telling you, I've had that same feeling that there's something else. I had a dream when I was 16 and it was behind me. My daughter here downstairs mm -hmm. came down to get a bottle of water. She said, Dad, something is standing behind me. I could feel it breathing. You know, that's when I was having this activity yeah. here. So there's been a lot of other people, yeah. you know, that has experienced. But I've always felt that, that there's some, sometimes I, the dog would go crazy. I can tell. And you hear it in the attic and stuff, mm -hmm. you know, there's something else here. Then she says, uh, well, have any of you ever felt that there's another presence oh. near you oh, yeah. or in the house and stuff? <laughs> you probably have. Yeah, They're probably like, with you 23 yeah, hours so a day. I sleep with a nightlight on, so I know who's in my room when I wake up in the middle well, of the you night. Know, you said that. My son, very athletic kid and everything, he always slept with a light on. Hey, I, I finally said to him, no, why do you sleep with a light on? He goes, Dad, because it is of the noises and the voices and stuff at night. Mm -hmm. 
he, he was afraid of this. And so you know what I do now after that happened to me, really in 15 and 16? Mm -hmm. I have night lights on upstairs. Yes. I cannot sleep. I used to sleep in pitch blackness. My daughter would say, how do you sleep in this house alone in the dark like that? I have lights uh, in, the, in the hallway, yes, yeah. in my room, yeah. in the kitchen. I do not have a black house anymore at night. Because you know? lights keep, the light They're keeps... They're afraid of the light. Yeah. 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 yeah, it takes their power. So, I, I mean, these are the great quotes you, you talk about with the writing. All sad people like poetry, mm -hmm. happy people like songs. Yes. Think about that. Yes. Poetry is sad, yes. you know? And she says, there are things within us that can never be unleashed. I mean, we all have the ability to kill, mm -hmm. to create, to kill. We have that in us. War, you see it, and how crazy people get, you know? She says, no more let life divide what death can join together. So she's thinking now of partnering with Dracula mm -hmm. and Satan, you know, at the end. Do you believe there is a, de a demi monday, a half-world between what we know and what we fear? So that's the interdimensional stuff we talked yes. about all the time, this half-world, this interdimensional heaven, hell, other dimensions that these shape-shifting mm -hmm. creatures come true. So then the, the bride says, <laughs> she, was a, she was a mean one, right? We were created to rule, my love, and the blood of mankind will water our garden. Us and our kin and our children and our generations, we are the conquerors, we are the pure blood, we are steel and sinew both. I don't know what sinew means. Sinew. Yeah. Sinew. What is that? What does that mean? It's like part of your body. It's like the pieces that hold you together. Oh, okay, okay. Synapses, okay. So, we are the next thousand years, we are the dead. Like the walking dead. Because mm -hmm. they don't die. Yeah, yeah. These things don't die. They're superior in that mm -hmm. sense. They live forever. They don't die. You can kill them, but mostly they don't die. So then Dorian Gray says, uh, photographs are so ironically impermanent. They capture one moment. One moment in time to perfection. A painting can capture eternity. Mm -hmm. And that has to do with the picture of Dorian yes, Gray, yes. where the, the picture yes. aged as he did bad things. It was in the picture that it showed up, you know? So Vanessa Ice is, is with that head witch. Mm -hmm. Remember, in, in, in that season, uh, only if she, and she's saying this to Vanessa, she's teaching her witchcraft, the, the right? Cut, the cut wife, yes. Yeah, the cut yes. wife, yeah. Only if all else fails, you speak the devil's tongue. But Mark, girl, it's a seduction. And before you blink twice, it's all you can speak. And so does the daywalker become a nightcomer. Mm -hmm. So, Fred, when you, when you submit to the devil, when you ask the devil for fame, fortune, you've lost your soul. And at that point that you left God and turned to the right. devil, you have now become from a day person yes. to a night person. Mm -hmm. I thought that was some cool stuff it, that it she was, said. Yes, yes. And, and the people that worship this stuff and are into the dark side of magic and witchcraft and, and the occult and all of that, I think they've lost their souls, you know? And, and the difference, Fred, right, between the UFO investigators and the hauntings, let's say, is they have protection spells, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. You don't go to a cemetery, you don't go to a haunted house unless you have a protection, you say the protection yes. spell, yes. you have other things, incense, yes. you have all these things, frankincense, all, whatever, right? We go out on UFO investigations, could walk into the paranormal, an right. abduction that's not alien, let's say, we're doing this stuff, we have no protection at all. all. Right. So I found out that the, the ghosties are actually more religious and the UFO people are very uh, atheistic, let's say, right. you know, to a, to a sense. To a sense. Yeah. Okay, so then uh, uh, Dr. Sweet, who was Dracula, says, I don't want to make you good. He's talking to Vanessa. I don't want you to be normal. I don't want you to be anything but who you truly are, mm -hmm. which is the mother of evil. Yes. You know? Yes. And uh, Malcolm, he says... We, when they were fighting these creatures, because they're humans fighting these freaking, uh, you know, demons, we could lose every battle except the last one. <laughs> right? You, yes, can lose, yeah. you can lose the battles, but you can't lose the war. Right. You lose the war, it's all over with, right? So now, uh, what, was, what was the uh, symbol? What was his last name? Sambin? Yeah. The house Sambin. servant yes, guy? Yes. <laughs> they asked him, and he goes, I believe in everything. <laughs> 
Because, you know, a lot like the Native Americans, the yes. Africans have uh, stories about everything. You know, and they're it, truly very spiritual, not yeah. just religious, but very, very spiritual and very, very in tune with the other side. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, the, the Native Americans, the Africans, what have you, mm -hmm. they're, they're very in tune with the other world. Yeah. Uh, so Sir Malcolm says, you're moving through, oh, he's given a description here because right, he's a big game hunter, right? He says, you're moving through the tall grass, getting a glimpse of the prey. The shoulders mostly, the mane. You prepare your rifle, you're very quiet, and then there's a moment the wind changes. The lion turns and looks at you. The moment you realize you are no longer the hunter, you are the prey. And that's mm -hmm. when these things are coming for them. They're coming, they're trying to go after them, but they're mm -hmm. coming for them also. You know, he also says, with me, you will behold terrible wonders. Dorian Gray says, Do you not yet comprehend the wicked secret of the immortal? All, a all age and die save you. All rot, talking about people, all rot and fall to dust save you. Any child you bear becomes a crone and perishes before your eyes. Any lover withers and shrinks into incontinence and bent toothless senility. Well, that's a description, huh? <laughs> uh, while you, only you, never age, never tire, never fade, alone, but after a time you'll lose the desire for passion entirely for connection with anyone, like a muscle that atrophies from lack of use, and one day you'll realize you've become like them, like a dead thing, you know, beautiful and dead. You have become a perfect, unchanging portrait of yourself. Yes, the portrait, portrait of, yes. of Dorian Gray. And one of the most tragic scenes, I, I truly think, is between him and Angelique. Is when Angelique does find, you know, the portrait. And, you know, Angelique loved him. Really did. Um, very sad character. Um, and what he, she went through. Um, but that moment when they're standing before the portrait, because she finds it, yeah, yeah. and he, he hands her, and they're, you know, she's talking about, you know, the love or what have you, and and the betrayal, that moment of betrayal, and the, and the look of horror on the face of realizing the betrayal. Yeah, yeah. Now, those are some great scenes in this, you know. So the bride says, uh, when our day has come, you will know terror. The Frankenstein monster says to Frankenstein, look upon your master. Uh, the one Hecate, the one uh, witch, right? She was a witch? Yes. Yeah, she was Hecate. a witch. Hecate. Hecate, Hecate, yes. right. Uh, she says, there is only one way to free yourself of guilt. Embrace your sins. Yes. Be who you are. Yes. You're a werewolf, be the werewolf and the killer, you know? Right, and for, for as much as she was evil, she, she was loyal. Yeah. She yeah. was truly loyal to oh, him. Definitely loyal. Yes. Literally. Yes, you know? yes. Uh, uh, the werewolf Ethan uh, Chandler says, All those things that mark you when you're young, that make you what you are. And there's a, you know, a lot of truth to that, how you grow up, some of your experiences, right. all of that, that kind of marks you and makes you who you are. So uh, Dr. Jekyll, who was in it for like, what, four episodes? That's <laughs> yes, why I, I don't understand I, I was this. disappointed about yeah. that because he was a good character. You introduce this guy and yeah. then it's over, right? Yeah. He says, we are all two things in a way, are we not? Deep in the marrow, angel and devil, light and dark, the pull between the two is the active verb which energizes our lives. You know, there's that, that friction between being good and bad, right? So then Dr. Frankenstein says, after all, it is our memories which make us monsters, is it not? Uh, Ethan says to Vanessa, I, I want you to be the mother of evil. Hmm. So there's a point there where you don't know which way they're going. Right. You know, we, you're not sure she is start, She at the end has turned to the dark side as, as the witch, and Ethan still hasn't decided is he a good guy or a bad guy, <laughs> you know, yeah. until the final couple of scenes, right? So she says, I believe in curses, I believe in demons, I believe in monsters. Well, you know, she was actually, the whole thing, if you, if you look and you watch the story, and I don't know if they actually ever say it, but if you pay attention, the whole reason is she was born from sin. Literally born okay. from sin because she was actually Sir Malcolm's daughter. 
Oh, yeah, yeah, because yeah. Because he was having an affair with, with her With the mother. mother. Yeah, yes. that's right. So, that's right. She was born in sin. Yes. Yeah. And it never says, but then there's a part that she is your daughter. No matter what, she's your daughter. And that's where he comes to an acceptance that it's just not about Mina, it's also about Vanessa. Mm. Uh, it's, it's a great storyline, you know. So uh, Vanessa says, you know the true path to freedom? Open up any vein and mm. kill yourself, you know. Uh, the creature says, the monster is not in my deformed face, but in my soul, you know, mm -hmm. who he is. So Malcolm says, given the chance to go back, would you do it differently? Walk the other way. Never meet me or her. Because they're into it now, because these people have sided with them to fight the evil. Ethan Chandler, the werewolf, says, You've seen what I come from, that dragon that raised me, that land that reared me. I've known very little grace in my life, but I did with her and with you. I think he's talking to Vanessa at that point, right? Uh, so she says, Do you truly not believe in heaven? Because there was a, there was a, well, she believed in God, you know. Yes, and, yes. And, she was you know, devout in her own way. Yeah, yes. well, she was younger, right? Yes. Yeah, okay. So she said that to the creature. The creature says, I believe in this world and those creatures that fill it. That's always been enough for me. So that's kind of like your, you know, they, they believe in science and what mm -hmm. they see and not into the spirit world. So she says to Dorian Gray, I don't remember what the, the scene was, is it poisonous? And he says, like all beautiful things. Yes, but they were in the green, they were in the greenhouse or yeah. in the all oh, yeah, the other flowers. Yes, with yeah. the flowers. Yes. <laughs> so uh, the werewolf says, "You ever wish you could be someone else? Just run away for your life from your life." He's talking to Dorian. Dorian says all the time. The creature says, "The sun will never shine so bright for me now that I have walked in darkness. I cannot be the man I was, Fred, when he was a human." You know, so now he knows he's a creature and always battling between good and, and evil, right? So this is the, the last scene with, with this now with Vanessa, right? She says, I am like no others. Your father loves you very much and would do anything to save you, but I love you in a different way. I love you enough to kill you, right? And then she says... I have been touched by Satan. My weakness allowed it. My faith was not strong enough, and Lucifer came to me. And I think that happens with a lot of people right. who embrace that because mm -hmm. they want something to mm -hmm. get even, to put a spell on somebody. Uh, they want money, they want fame, they want fortune. So at the final scene, Fred, what happens is the werewolf, they're mm -hmm. battling uh, Dracula, who's stronger. Yes. And they got him distracted. And the werewolf goes upstairs to where she is. She's already embraced Dracula, let him bite her. She's finished now. She's turning into a, a vampire, mm. right? So he goes up there thinking he can save her. And, and she basically says, kill me. Mm -hmm. And it was so hard for him to do because he loved her. He did. He you know? they, they, yeah. And they did love each other. So he shoots her. And Dracula's downstairs and he realized what's happened. His bride... Got, he, he got distracted fighting the others. His bride just died, and it's over with. And Ethan, as she's dying, she's, she's laying there, and she's looking up, and she says, Oh, Ethan, I see our Lord. Mm. It was a great scene. Yes, yes. That she was God right. is real. Yes. I mean, it was an absolute, yeah. it was an absolute great scene. And you know? that was her true redemption, because she allowed herself to be sacrificed. Yeah. She, she found love. And she allowed herself to be sacrificed for the for the goodwill of man because it once she died, everything like the plague and everything went away, hmm. like it instantly. Yeah, that's right. The yes. whole world yes. was becoming a plague. Yes. That final plague, Fred, where she was the mother of evil, and it was like there was sulfuric yes. acid yes. And, yeah. and darkness, and everything was dying. The whole world was dying. This was the end times mm -hmm. because they were taking over. So it was a great, it was a great show. It was you know yes. it was it just if you guys have never seen it, I'm gonna have to watch it. Yeah, oh, this was you guys are talking about. This is one of the best shows I've yeah. ever seen. Best yeah. written, acted. There was so much. It was very deep yeah. in the storyline and how we are like them. You know, in yes. so many ways. And and the last I, I the last final scenes, the last say I, I think six minutes or so, where you see you know John Clare, how he lets go his son. And how they, you see them at her gravesite, and in the whole time he's narrating the background, um, 
which was William Wordsworth's uh, poem. You know, um, it was int intimations of immortality from recollections of early childhood. Mm -hmm. And it was just very poignant, very just... And I thought that the monster would join them to go fight Dracula, mm -hmm. but he didn't. No. He was always separate yes. and alone yes. by himself yes. and never joined them, yeah. you know. So, I mean, there were so many great scenes in, in the writing, Fred, was just phenomenal. Yes. And you know, and, and I said, well, it's got to be a season four, but the way they ended it, they couldn't be. I guess it could be where you continue with right. them and the monsters, mm -hmm. and, and maybe the werewolf has a bigger role now. Because yes. they were kind of afraid of him, because yes. of what he could do. Right. And he was became on the good side, yes. the werewolf of God, which I thought was a great line. And there were so many great lines in this. So, I want to take it a step further now, Fred, to something we've never really talked about, and... That's why mm -hmm. Steve is here, and, and you can kick in on this too, is the gin. You know, uh, th this is just another maybe season four storyline that could have been introduced, yes. right. or it's along the same lines and everything. And the picture you're seeing here for the camera is the gin. There's two very evil versions, but then you got I Dream of Genie, right? Yes. Genie is the gin. It's, yes. it's the same. That's our version, right? So the gin, and then I'll let you jump in. Mm -hmm. the, the gin is basically Middle Eastern entities like Aladdin, A Thousand and One Arabian Nights. They're shapeshifters, they're tricksters. You get three wishes and then they kind of take your soul, you know. But the same thing like Vanessa Ives yes. and these people have made a pact with the devil like Faust. And then you give your soul up for this, right? Right. So Rosemary Ellen Guiley said, the evidence points to them being a significant part of our interactions with parallel dimensions and otherworldly realities that, in, that intrude into ours. She said, to put it simply, and I don't know that I believe this part, plasma is an ionized gas into which sufficient energy is provided, freeing electrons and atoms and molecules and changing them into what they exist. This strange fourth state of matter is the most common in the universe. Our sun is plasma, lightning is plasma. These creatures could be plasma and require very little physical space to exist. It's the space between the space. Yes. So before I continue, did you want to add some stuff on the gin and, and what you know about the gin? Well, I won't, but I want to know about the gin as compared to Christianity. What's the difference? And there basically isn't that much difference. Okay. The only difference is they don't believe in Jesus Christ as God, the Son of God or God. Right. They believe him as a normal everyday person and Allah, which is their God, took him up to heaven, and he's going to return later to finish what he started. Yeah. Now, as for Jin... Well, let me just add to that. The, the thing with the... Now, it's interesting, the Muslims, the Jews, and the Christians believe in the Old Testament. All three have that in common. Mm -hmm. That's why when I made... Remember when I made that thing up, the... Uh, String theory of the unexplained, I used a Ouija board, mm -hmm. and some people said, what are you putting a Ouija board up for? Mm -hmm. I said, well, the T in string was a cross. Right. In the corner is the Hebrew star, the other corner, the Jewish, you know, eighth right. of the moon. Right. It's the three religions that counter the devil right. and then all believe in the Old Testament, mm -hmm. you know. So, and then with, uh, mm -hmm. with Allah, with uh, Muhammad, the, the thing there is, they say Jesus was a prophet, not the Son of God. Yeah. But since Muhammad showed up last, in what was that, 1400 uh, mm. AD? He showed up in 1400, I think that's the date, mm. or 600, I don't remember which it is. But he came after Jesus, since he's last, he's the real one, not Jesus. So, you know, mm. that's kind of how they, they play that stuff. But you were going to say something else? And also that Allah, which was their God, like in Christianity... The devil was thrown out of heaven to earth, took a third of the angels with him. Yeah. But in Allah, he created the gene. And he created, and doesn't matter what day, they said in where I read, yeah. say he made the gin on Wednesday, he made the angels on a Thursday. Well, okay. they might not have Wednesday and yeah. Thursdays, but one day he made them. The Thursday the fourth. <laughs> and the gin was made out of uh, fire with no smoke or ashes, which they class as energy. Okay. And the jinn thought they were better than normal because uh, Allah wanted the jinn to bow down to Adam, to man. Okay. And the jinn wouldn't do it. So that's why they went up their, their own separate ways yeah. and turned into evil. Yeah. And there's three main kinds of jinn, but there's also ten 
kinds of gins. And they can come in and out of reality. They oh, can yeah, also yeah. be a physical person. Mm -hmm. And they say that they even marry people on earth. And so how similar is that to, if you look at Christianity, there's nine levels of angels. We talked right, about right, that. Right, right. There's nine levels of fallen angels or, or demons. Mm -hmm. You have the Nephilim, the watchers, yeah, yeah. who made it with females, yeah. you know, they will follow in a yeah, way yeah. and make their own version of the same yeah. stories, right. you know. I and mean, you made a, an interesting point, and this was something I never really knew, and I'm not 100% clear on this. Did the uh, Lucifer and those angels not want to bow to the creation of Adam because he was so inferior to them? And I've also read that, no, it wasn't Adam, it was to bow to Jesus, who was already in heaven. Jesus, mm -hmm. Jesus didn't show up 2,000 years ago. He's always been there at, since day one mm -hmm. in heaven. And, and like, like you, you look at what the descriptions of the angels, says each of the nine levels is taller, bigger, more muscular, let's say. So Satan is, Lucifer is the top one, the most beautiful, the biggest, maybe he's nine feet tall. And here comes this uh, five foot... Jesus weighing uh, 120 pounds with a beard and being really nice to everybody. He goes, I'm not, I'm not bowing to him. Or is it, I'm not bowing to an even lower version of a physical human, mm -hmm. which is now the 10th, that's the 10th level. When you said that they have 10, yeah. the human is the 10th level. So, you know, it's interesting. And, but and it's, Jin said that uh, humans were made of clay and they were made of energy, so they're better and there's no way in the world they're going to bow to yeah, humans. Yeah, so that's interesting storylines. Uh, in this, the jinn reside in places such as caves, mountains, deserts, forests. In, in the West, we invented the genie in the bottle. Yes. I dream a genie, yes. right? We, mm -hmm. the bottle, you know, you, Fred, you rub it three times and you get three wish wishes. That was our invention of the jinn. The jinn can appear as smokeless fire, black dogs in a mist, a snake or a scorpion, black, black shadows, half human, half animal, like the Egyptian mm -hmm. gods, yes. or if you remember the movie The Mummy, and they had the sandstorm and he was yes. blowing, yes. they can appear in sandstorms and strong winds, and rainstorms, and, rainstorms well. and all that. All that. Uh, they use a doorway into our dimension, they can walk through walls, they can drain a person's energy. Now doesn't that come up in UFO, in, in abductions, yeah, exactly, yeah. in, in all yeah. these? They're, they're what are psychic <coughs> vampires that drain your energy. Mm -hmm. They can possess you and make you ill. Mm -hmm. So the jinn is technically a demon, right? right. So you're really right. dealing with a fallen angel or a demon. And <coughs> when you see a red jinn, one of those ten that you mentioned, when you see a red jinn, they, they're there to collect your soul. The red jinn takes your soul. Well, you know, get, getting into that now, so, okay, now the big thing with UFOs again is um, they're taking souls. They're here to take the soul. So, could they be jinn? Well, yeah. I mean, it's, know, I mean it, the yeah. storylines are the yeah. same. Yeah. I mean, they're here to take your soul. So, and they say they can take your soul anytime they want. They can just reach in and grab it. So, again, you know, you got, you got that there. I mean, yeah, the storylines of... Well, that's why, you know, when I talked about the demonic and fallen angel, right. there's about a 70% overlap to a demonic infestation mm -hmm. and an alien abduction. Right. So right. what are they? They're really right. the same. You know, and there's all these different versions. The Native mm -hmm. Americans, we did an episode on their folklore, right? Every culture has them. The uh, mm -hmm. Norwegians, you know, with, with, with their gods. You know, it's really all the same stuff. But the important thing is, Every culture and every time period has experienced this, right. have encountered it, so it's real. Something is real. We just call it different names. You yes. Know? Yes. We call it paranormal, but we don't even know what that means, you know? And they all go to God. Yeah, and there is a God in, yeah. involved with yeah. all of that. The, the, uh, anything else you guys wanted to add? Now, the Jin says that they, if you believe in like the Ouija board or magic, you are a disbeliever, and they use you as a tool. Yeah. Because once you start believing in all that, you stop believing in God. Because now you're talking to Aunt Martha at the end of your bed. She died yesterday and that's yeah. Aunt Martha. Well, yeah. that's not really Aunt Martha. That's a demon pretending to... And now all of a sudden you're going to see psychics and you're going to hear... And you're not studying the Bible. Yeah, you're letting them in through divination, wanting mm -hmm. 
uh, hidden knowledge. Which, which is true, but it's also another way that they tried to control the masses so that only you listen to their religious people. Mm -hmm. you know, whether it was you know, a priest or a minister or what have you, whatever you want to call them, a rabbi. Yeah. Um, One thing I was wanted to always ask you, I know you, I've talked to you before, when you see bad things, do you ever see good things? Do you see angels too? I have seen the most profound, ethereal, beautiful angels. I've had experiences. I've also seen the, the most horrid, demonic possible. Mm -hmm. I've seen it on both sides. Does it scare you, the bad ones? It can take you a little bit back, mm -hmm. but I don't allow it to... Do they try to hurt you, personally? I've had my, my dealings, and we've come to it a, you know, an Is agreement. it true on how we talked before that if you say, God be gone, do they go? That yes, yes. Um, I, I am a true devout believer and I've always worked with the angels, um, especially the main, the main four or five that I always call upon. Um, they're always there. You know, yeah. it's, it's the, it's, you need to call on them though for them to, you know, unless it's something that, yeah. that's... And it also says in my notes that if you are a true believer in God and Jesus and everything, the jinn won't. Come near you. Well, they can't. If you yeah, focus yeah, on yeah. God, they have no power, yeah. and that's why yeah. they have to respond to the name of Jesus. They yes. can't ignore it. They Correct. have to respond. That's why you don't say, I'm good. I'm, you know, you say, Jesus Christ commands you to leave. Jesus Christ mm -hmm. binds yes. you. Yeah. They don't have a choice. Because they, like man, when they die, because they do die, okay, they are also judged by God. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, yeah. Um, the other thing that I found when I was I was also researching and looking a few things up, and I didn't realize, I thought, and I went back through my old notes, and I was looking that the jinn are associated with Arabian fairies. They're a form of fairy. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. Elementals, fire, mm -hmm. fire elementals, elementals or fire. Yeah. Right. Um, and that to um, protect yourself, iron. They they don't like iron, mm -hmm. just like the majority of all fairies. Yeah. They don't Garlic, like iron. Yeah, iron yeah, there are yeah. things that repel them. You know. Yes. So it's interesting. The, the last slide I had, Fred, was, you know, I mentioned in the beginning the activity that was here in the house. Right. And I have a picture of my dog who passed away last Saturday, a week mm. ago today. His name was Apophis, the Egyptian god of destruction. And uh, I had him nine years, but he was ten years, mm. a couple of weeks he would have been ten mm. years old. I was his sixth owner in ten months when I got him. Five other people had him a week or two and brought him back, and I got him. You know, and it's funny how things happen, Fred, and I, I do think that there are things that happen for a reason. Right. This is the biggest Doberman I've ever seen, 110 pounds, big, most 85 pounds, mm -hmm. to 90 maybe, 110, big, powerful dog, best guard dog. And when there were things in the house, he alerted me. Mm -hmm. It's amazing. He went down the hallway one night and looked up the attic stairs because the door was open. He went ballistic. He saw something. Yes. He would hear them and, and you know, and then you'd go to bed and you'd hear noises and movement and banging in this in this dog, I was meant to be his owner. Yes. You know, that's, that's the, good, yeah. yeah, that's the way I view this. Nobody would take this dog except me. My son would say, Dad, I worry about you. I, you know, we're going to not hear from you and come over and find out the dog mauled you. Because he, he was a powerful, angry dog. He was created, he was trained mm -hmm. to be a guard dog. And he, he bit a, a delivery man in the last place he was at a car wash, you know. I mean, he was, uh, but he protected me from evil. He really yes. did. You know, he, he was with me for my nine years I've been retired. I got him two months before I retired, and, uh, you know, he was here every day with me, Fred. You know, really? it wasn't like the other two sets of two Dobermans. Mm -hmm. They had each other to guard the property, right, right, right. and I was traveling, working, and all of that. But he was my dog, mm -hmm. and he was there for a reason. And there was yeah. a point there where he was growling going after this, and then one morning, I, he can't lift himself up. Yes. You know, they, it was like an attack on him. Yes. You know, and, and I took him to the vet. He couldn't lift his head. He was on, he was, it turned out he had Lyme disease. Mm -hmm. You know, did he have Lyme disease? Did they give him Lyme disease? It pops up in the middle of a battle. Right. You know, and, and it's Which, funny. Yes, I, I, went, I went through something similar. Yeah, and you know, and I, uh, I took him and I got the medicine and it was slow to help. And one night I just prayed to God and said, God, protect my dog, please. He protects me, protect him. I got up the next morning. He was fine. There wasn't one thing. He was fine. Running around, didn't have a problem anymore. It's like 
this stuff is real. Yes. And I don't know how to emphasize that but, more. But people, with people don't believe it, John. They I mean, don't. I, I, I well, think, unless they have an experience yeah. like I, I didn't. Well, I was a lapsed Christian, getting pulled into the paranormal with no. UFOs, and now I'm a reborn Christian because of the things that happened. I but, know this is real. But see, you, you're okay. Again, you're into the paranormal. I'm into the paranormal. She's into the paranormal. He's into the paranormal. He's into the paranormal. We see things that normal people don't see, and they don't believe us. And they don't believe it. And I they mean, don't you have know, the time it, to think about it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, they, they they look at you like you're totally crazy. Like, okay, like we talked about Judette out in Vegas. Guess what? She called me last night, and then she says, "Well, are you guys coming out?" I said, "I don't know." She said, "I'll have to have lunch with you guys." Well, if we go, I'm definitely yeah. going. Yeah. yeah. But she said, um, we started talking, and she said about Bigfoot as an epsilon. And I mean, I've she, heard that. Yeah, she got really into it, heavy with frequency. Mm -hmm. She started talking frequency. Resonance, again. tone, frequency. Yeah, but I mean, it, it was amazing because I think you and I talked about it having lunch with her. And then she just called me. She said, you still pissed off at me. And I said, no, really, I mean, you know, yeah. whatever. So, but I mean, again, I mean, you know, we look at things totally different. I mean, it's like now, okay, I'm, I'm doing this um, for, the, for the presentation. So now we're looking at aliens, what are they? Do they really drink blood? Mm. Okay, do they eat kids? You tell that to somebody and they look at you like you're totally gone, man. I mean, what? Yeah. I mean, you know, but, but, but we, we are in a field where we see this stuff and hear this stuff every day. So to us, this is like common knowledge. I mean, you know, and I think that's what's wrong with the world today. Yeah. Well, you know, it's funny, Fred. I tried to get into politics three years ago, oh. and what's the, what do they bring up? Not the fact you wrote ten books, three research papers, did four years on television, the only guy in town to be on the Anderson Cooper show for mm. 45 mm. minutes, yeah. right? Three years on History Channel, you're on Discovery Channel. That's not an accomplishment. Mm. You're a UFO nut. Yeah. That's how yeah. they paint me. You're a UFO nut. Not that I'm one of the more successful people in town, mm. but you know, but that's what you're up against. You try to get into other fields yeah. like that, and and they they marginalize you and they name you and they paint you. But you know, I'm the most creative guy around. <laughs> it just but you is. wonder why they do that now because every single TV show is about UFOs and ghosts and this yeah. and that, and everybody's watching. Tucker Carlson's talking yeah. about yeah. it every week. Well, and, but now, it, now it's accepted. But, but those yeah, you know, those yeah. are really the conservative yeah. Republicans. Yeah. Who won't accept it? You know, it it, it just amazes me. Oh. And I'm the most biggest yeah. Trump supporter going. But when they want to disparage you, they'll bring that up and say, yeah. "Well, he's a UFO nut." Well, it's like when I, when I first moved to West Virginia. I mean, I'm down there with you know, the shit kickers, and I'm sitting drinking in a bar, and they're all looking at me like, you know, this guy's yeah. crazy. I mean, you know, he, he, he hunts ghosts. He believes in Bigfoot. He believes in UFOs. Nobody even sit by me. Yeah. Then one day, this lady wrote an article when I started teaching down there. It was a whole page. I went in that night. It was up on a wall. I had 20 chips. Oh, my God. You know, you really do that? You, really. I mean, so now, I, I think they look at you like you're crazy until they know you. I mean, it's like now. They say anything that they talk about down there, it has anything to do with them. That's what he knows. You know, before it was like, don't, yeah. don't say nothing. Well, when they want to slander you, they do. Yeah. Well, you know, when I went to one meeting, I was running for head of the Republican Party in the county, yeah. county and the one girl says, well, tell us about your hobbies, you know. Uh, you, uh, we know you still believe, you still talk about lecture on UFOs. I said, let me tell you about my hobbies. I play racquetball. At 59, I won the racquetball tournament. I, everybody I beat mm -hmm. was under 40. I, I do kickboxing. At, at, in my late 50s, that was a few years yeah. ago, uh, I was trained by a guy who's the uh, trainer at Floyd Mayweather's gym and trains UFC fighters. Uh, is that the hobbies you wanted to talk about? Mm -hmm. Why do you want to talk about my interest in explaining the unexplained, but you don't want to talk about my other hobbies? Because your question was meant to disparage me. Yeah, yeah. And that's what they do. Well, that's, that's what how they, they do. look at it. I mean, that's something you, you know. That's I, the ignorance that yeah. people have. Well, I just look at them now and just laugh, like, oh, well, whatever. I mean, like yeah. my license plate. I get yeah. pulled over just because of that damn license plate. Yeah. And they don't pull me over for a ticket or anything. They pull me over and I'll say, could I ask you why you pulled me over? Mm. You was following the truck too fast. And then they look at me and they'll come back to the car with, with a warning and they'll go, uh, you got any cards? 
Like, yeah, you yeah. then they'll ask you. Yeah. I mean, you know how many people, yeah. Yeah. cops, yeah. people, they'll come to me, oh, let me tell you about this, let me tell you, you know, it's yeah. like, and be other people. Big, they won't say it publicly, you right. know? So, all right, that's our episode. It was meant to be on the Penny Dreadful series, mm -hmm. segued into the gin. But, uh, I, like I said, anybody that's never seen this series, go rent it, go, go, go buy it. Okay, that's our episode. Thank you.